Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. President Trump just walked out to reporters and gave Mitch McConnell career-ending ultimatum. Well, folks. It's been a long time coming but President Donald Trump has finally given Senator McConnell the ultimatum that I think every American was waiting for. During a meeting with reporters at his NJ residence, Trump laid down the law thick by declaring unequivocally that Mitch McConnell has one more chance to get health care, taxes, and infrastructure done or else Trump will have him replaced as Senate leader. The president told the gaggle of reporters outside. If he doesn't get repeal and replace done, and if he doesn't get taxes done, meaning cuts and reform, and if he doesn't get a very easy one to get done, infrastructure, if he doesn't get them done, then you can ask me that question. When the reporters pushed the president to explain what he meant by ask me that question, he simply repeated the phrase. However, anyone with half a brain can tell a threat when they see one. The thing is, everyone agrees with the president here. McConnell has been a failure in the Senate to accomplish legislative goals. In fact, plenty of the Republicans have left us with Obamacare fully intact. So, if you all are thinking it's time to repeal and replace the current Republicans in the Senate, with new Republicans, help share this out everywhere and show them 2016 is coming. Turnco Susan Rice just did something insane to help North Korea. Y'all remember Obama's national security advisor Susan Rice don't ya? Sure y'all do. She is a big part of the hell storm we're in right now. So what does she do when she hears that North Korea is threatening the US with the nukes she helped them make? She runs to their side and handed them what they wanted. Rice gave Kim Jong-un exactly what he wanted and said that the U.S. should tolerate a nuclear North Korea. Oh, really Susan Rice? Is that because your shitty policies as the National Security Advisor put us in this terrible predicament in the first place? Frankly, you are the last person who should be advising anyone. The buffoon wrote in a New York Times op-ed. War is not necessary to achieve prevention despite what some in the Trump administration seem to have concluded. History shows that we can, if we must, tolerate nuclear weapons in North Korea, the same way we tolerated the far greater threat of thousands of Soviet nuclear weapons during the Cold War. No, Susan, let me clear this up for you. War should not have been necessary if it were not for the failed policies of you, your administration, and everyone else dating back to the mid-90s. Still. The U.S. was viewed as very weak when Obama was president. Sure, Europe loved him, but Russia, China, North Korea, Syria, Iran, and many others walked all over him because he had no backbone. If you think we have let the Kims and North Korea get away with this for far too long, share this out and let Trump know that we support fire and fury if necessary. Muslim fired by CNN just called Trump a cult leader, it's insane. The left-wing media has made no shortage of idiotic and harmful statements about Republican President Trump. However, one of the strangest one in recent history came when an Iranian-American former CNN host named Reza Aslan just stated that he thinks President Trump is the same as a cult leader. Liberals always try to claim that Trump uses Twitter recklessly, but he has nothing on Muslim Aslan who tweeted about the president earlier this year, this piece of shit is not just an embarrassment to America and a stain on the presidency. He's an embarrassment to humankind. Thankfully, this was so offensive that even left-wing CNN fired Ray's off from his job hosting the religion show Believer. Getting canned, however, only seems to have emboldened the unemployed Aslan, who recently stated, I am not the first person to point this out, there's been a cultish quality to President Trump's most ardent supporters. He went on, throughout the campaign, and in personal appearances since then, 
Trump has harnessed the kind of emotional intensity from his bash that is more typical of a religious revival meeting than a political rally, complete with ritualized communal chants, lock her up. He then slammed people who continued to support Trump, claiming that they do not think for themselves, saying, as we approach the one-year anniversary of Trump's election victory, the zeal of some of his followers seems increasingly akin to a fledged cult. It kept getting stranger, with him writing, I use the word cult in its pejorative sense, meaning a deeply insular social group bound together by extreme devotion to a charismatic leader. Such groups tend to exhibit a few common characteristics. He then said absurdly, they are usually formed around an individual whom they've elevated to prophetic and near-divine status. Are you sick of the crazy things the left-wing media keeps saying about Trump and his supporters? Their finished Mitch McConnell, Paul Ryan and Nancy Pelosi are about to be ruined when what just happened gets out. Congress has not done anything much in a really long time, have they? That's just one aspect of the swamp Trump promised to drain. And it's working. A new poll just came out that indicates that a majority of Americans think that Congress is a failure so far. That's right, 68% of us are disgusted with our representatives in Washington, D.C. And I hope they understand what that means. Because they are only there because we sent them there. And we can send them packing, too. I mean, just the other day, Senator McConnell actually wide that Trump had excessive expectations of Congress. Are you really serious, Mitch? Do your dang job. This is a majority Republican Congress, yet even among only Republicans, 44% disapprove of Congress right now. Another 44% approve. Not too good, GOP Congress. 59% of the respondents disapprove of the Democrats in Congress. Listen, we need to help Trump drain the swamp. And we can do it, with our votes. There's a big election in 2018 and we have the power to change our country, if we get out and vote. If you intend to help Trump drain the swamp, Comment hashtag drain swamp and share to enlist help from everyone you know. Seconds ago Trump looked into the camera and thanked Putin for what he did for us. President Trump just thanked Vladimir Putin on Thursday for something incredible. OMG! You got to love our president. He is a straight killer. Trump thanked Putin for cutting the U.S.'s diplomatic staff by 755 people. It's his first public comment on the issue and it's going to drive liberals nuts. That's why we need to get this video in front of all of them. Here is his full statement. I want to thank him because we're trying to cut down our payroll and as far as I'm concerned I'm very thankful that he let go of a large number of people because now we have a smaller payroll. Trump told reporters at his Bedminster, New Jersey, golf club. There's no real reason for them to go back. I greatly appreciate the fact that we've been able to cut our payroll of the United States, he continued. We're going to save a lot of money. The media is nothing but a bunch of chicken heads. They have been cluck, cluck, clucking about the Russia scandal. Share this if you voted for Trump and are going to not listen to the media when we go vote the swamp out in 2018. Mike Huckabee just dropped a bombshell about Maxine Waters and her trip to North Korea. Former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee targeted Rep. Maxine Waters, Democrat California, in the worst way. He mentioned the following about North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and Miss Waters this past Thursday. If you didn't catch that reference, here's what it means. Mike Huckabee is referring to the fact that Kim Jong-un and his half-brother Kim Jong-nam killed, according to South Korea's intelligence agency last February. Mike Huckabee hit the nail on the head. I mean who isn't tired of Mad Maxine Waters? Mad Maxine and Lil' Kim sitting in a tree. K-I-S-S-I-N-G. First comes love, then comes marriage, then comes a nuke mountain to a baby carriage. They are a match made in heaven. 
share this if you are so very tired of Maxine Waters. It's time to clean out the house and Senate. Get this out there if you agree. It's up to us to bring these swamp monsters down. Right after threatening North Korea with fire and fury, Trump just did the unthinkable. You would think the world has gone insane ever since Donald Trump laid down the law with North Korea when he threatened them with fire, fury, and power. Well, today the president decided to go even harder on Kim Jong-un by taking it to an entirely different level. President Trump said that fire and fury was not tough enough for North Korea. Trump told the pack of rabbit, scoop-seeking reporters. Frankly, the people who were questioning that statement, was it too tough? Maybe it wasn't tough enough. They've been doing this to our country for a long time, for many years, and it's about time that somebody stuck up for the people of this country and for the people of other countries. So what is Trump gonna do? A lot of folks seem to think this may mean a preemptive strike is on the way. Be that as it may. The president made it very clear that he will not be giving up his attack plans like Obama famously did for ISIS. However, the president also sought to reassure the American people by declaring, The people of this country should be very comfortable, and I will tell you this, if North Korea does anything in terms of even thinking about attack of anybody that we love or we represent or our allies or us, they can be very, very nervous. Do you trust President Trump to handle this crisis? Is there any way to avoid a war at this point? Help share this out and let everyone know that, despite the media's claims, Trump does have a plan.